this large print songbook.
And I wish we had a camera up here and we could zoom in on the congregation so people could see. It's beautiful. You're beautiful. All right. Keeping step. One more thing. on two, men on three, everybody on one and four, okay? Through the night, to brighter tomorrow, side by side, God's little man, keeping still, marching to
We need to do on that song. You know, I'm sitting there looking at the song going, what's going on? What happened? I, I was on the wrong page. <laughs> These aren't the verses I'm saying. <laughs> it took a minute to figure out. All right, 68. See what happened again. Now we go.
Amen. Thank you, brothers. Good morning. Buenos dias. Welcome to the Church of Jesus Christ. Bienvenidos a la Iglesia de Jesucristo. Thank you for your prayers. I'm feeling much better. Gracias por sus oraciones. Me siento más mejor. Uh, I, I never want you to think that those prayers are unheard. God hears you and I feel them. Thank you. Nunca quiero que pienses que sus oraciones no están escuchados. Dios los, los oyó y los doy gracias por sus oraciones. It's very comforting to know when you're gagging on whatever it is that's inside of you that the saints are praying and you're going to get through it. Me da mucho gusto que cuando se sienta uno que se está ahogando con lo que está pasando en el sistema de Dios, que los santos te tienen en oración. So may God bless each and every one of you for your prayers today. Que Dios los bendiga por sus oraciones este día. We're a little light. There's still quite a few of us that are under the weather. Este, hay unos pocos de nosotros aquí, unos que todavía están enfermos. Sister Linda's feeling better, but not quite well enough to be back in church. La hermana Linda se sienta más mejor, pero no suficiente para estar aquí con nosotros. I talked to Sister Virginia this morning. She's not doing too well. La hermana Virginia no está muy bien. I think mostly allergies for her. Este, los agregarías para ella. And I can only assume if Sister Ida's not here, she's not feeling well either. So let's continue to remember all these saints and others in prayer. También la hermana Ida que no se siente mejor. Este, por favor ponga todos estos hermanos y hermanas en oración. Here's the good news. Estas son las noticias buenas. God never gets sick. Dios nunca se va a enfermar. And he's always ready. Y él todo el tiempo está listo. He works through our afflictions and through our flesh, and he produces wonderful fruit. Él trabaja en nuestras aflicciones y él nos trae que nosotros podemos atraer buena fruta. So, despite probably common wisdom, I'm actually going to open the meeting today. Disculpe que no tengo tan un entendimiento aquí, pero como quiera yo abrir el servicio este día. So, if you wouldn't mind one more prayer that I can get through this service. So, si por favor me pongan una oración que Dios me ayude para cumplir este servicio hoy. But before we get to that, we're going to set the table. Pero antes que comenzamos con eso, vamos a preparar la cena santa. Do you have a hymn, sister? En la cruz. What number is that? 49 in the branch favorites, Brother Mike.
Um, you know, the ministers have a little bit of a, of a special advantage up here. When we see a sister set the table, you guys don't see what we see. We see sisters that come here to the table and you see the spirit fall upon them at that moment as you see humility and compassion fall upon them. And you see the, the respect and the commitment that they have to set this table and they don't take it lightly. They do it with love and compassion. And to see you sisters come up here and set this table and see how God touches you at that moment. God bless you for what you do. Holy Father, we uh, felt you enter the room in our singing and now with our brother's comments as he watched the sacrament table be set. We know that you're here with us, Lord. We know that you're always with us. And we're so thankful for your son, Jesus Christ, who made this all possible. So Father, bless us today. Let us release ourselves and worship you, Father, in spirit and truth. Let us enjoy the movement of the spirit. And I pray, Father, for my brother who's been sick. You'd release him, Father, to preach the gospel like he's never preached it before. So bless us today, Father, as we go forward in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you need some water, Sister Mary? I'm fine. All right. If you change your mind, let me know. Okay. Stop. Stop. Me está que si quiero algo de Dios que no quiero sin dar necesito de valicidato. Perdón. I have so many thoughts going through my head right now, and almost all of them are tied to my message. Tengo tantos <laughs> pensamientos en mi mente pasando y ni uno tiene que ver con mi mensaje. I can't, I think the name of the movie was Major League, and uh, they had this crazy pitcher who they had brought in from the, from the, from prison to, pre, to, to pitch. Hubo una película que se llama La Liga Mayor, y trajeron a este hombre loco de la prisión para que pudiera tirar la pelota. And he turned out to be a great pitcher with a great fastball. Y salió que fue un gran a tirador de la, de la pelota. But he was a little wild sometimes, so they would have to like hold him and try to direct him a little bit better. Pero en veces se exageraría y lo tenían que tratar de controlar. And at the end of the game, they needed a relief pitcher, and so they called for him to come in, and when he comes in, the crowd just goes wild. Y cuando necesitan a alguien que venga, él sale y la gente se vuelve loca uh, aplaudándole a él. That's how I imagine Sister Mary being called in from the, from the congregation to come up front to, you know, she's our, she's going to be our closer today, you know, to wrap us up. Yeah, dice que él se ve que yo soy esa persona que me vuelvo de gusto de venir a venir aquí en frente. You didn't hear the angels. They were in heaven screaming, go, Sister Mary, go. <laughs> dice que no, vimos los ángeles gritando en el, los cielos santos, ve, Mara Mary, ve. <laughs> I was also sharing with the brothers this morning that um, I'm having some work done at my house. And so Sister Lynn and I had to clear out of our bedroom and bathroom. Uh, estaba discutiendo con mis hermanos temprano 
que la hermana Linda y yo estamos uh, componiendo nuestra casa y tuvimos que salirnos de nuestro cuarto y el cuarto de baño. And so I packed up all my clothes and I went looking for a tie this morning and I couldn't find my ties. Y empaqueté todo y pues tenía, necesitaba una corbata y esta mañana no podía encontrar ni una. And so I decided, well, I said, it's better to go to church without a tie than not go to church. Yo decidí es mejor ir a la iglesia sin la corbata de no ir a la iglesia. And so Brother Mike was so kind to lend me his tie for today. So I want to thank Brother Mike for adding a little pop, pop of color in my outfit today. Le quiero dar las gracias a hermano Mike porque gracias a Dios él me prestó una corbata de él y que me da color a mi I hope it doesn't distract from the message. My message today is the story of the prodigal son. <clears throat> and if you'd like to follow along, we're going to be uh, starting in the book of Luke, chapter 15. And I know we're familiar with the story. <clears throat> Yo sé que todos conocemos esta historia. And um, I want to put a little new twist on it today. Le quiero poner algo nuevo a esta historia. And just to help you remember the story, I'm going to rehearse to you the first few verses of it. Para recordarles la historia, les voy a leer los primeros versículos. In this story, a man has two sons. En esta historia, un hombre tiene dos hijos. And at one point, the man, the younger son says to his father, I think I want to take my inheritance now and I want to just do with it whatever I want. Y el, el hijo más joven decidió y le dijo a su padre, yo quiero la parte de mi herencia ahora para yo hacer lo que yo quiero con ella. And the father obviously was not too happy, but he agreed it was his inheritance. So he divided his, his inheritance and he gave it to his son. Obviamente el padre no quería hacer esto, pero como el hijo lo deseaba, él decidió y dividió yo el, la herencia entre los dos hermanos. And as it is typically even with young people today, they get a little bit of money in their pocket and they just want to spend it. Y es típico como los jóvenes de hoy tienen un poquito de dinero en su bolsa y quieren ir a gastarlo. And it didn't take long before he spent all of his inheritance. Y no tomó mucho tiempo cuando gastó toda su herencia. So he needed to find a job so he could survive. Entonces tuvo que buscar un trabajo para sobrevivir. And he worked in the lowest of low positions tending to pigs. Y consiguió un trabajo más bajo de lo más bajo cuidando cerdos. And as he was looking, feeding the pigs this terrible food, he realized that even the servants in his father's house ate better than these pigs. Y yeah. cuando estaba dándole de comer a estos cerdos, él se dio cuenta que en su casa los siervos de su padre en su casa comían mejor que lo que estaban comiendo estos cerdos. So he decides he's going to repent, he's going to go home and beg for his father's forgiveness just so he could be a servant in his father's house. Entonces él decide regresar a su casa, arrepentirse, pedirle perdón a su padre y tener una posición de, sir de siervo. And so he even rehearses the speech that he's going to give to his father to apologize. Y va practicando en lo que le va a decir a su papá. And so as he starts heading home with this sorrow in his heart, because he's not sure if his father's going to take him back or not. Y así como va caminando en el camino para su casa, va un poquito triste porque él no está seguro que su papá lo va a recibir. He's coming up the road and his father sees him way off in the distance before he gets to the house. Y cuando viene en el camino, el padre lo ve que viene de lejos uh, en el camino para la casa. And his father is so excited, he runs out to meet him on the road, and he gives him a big hug and a kiss. Y el padre se pone tan contento de verlo, corre, y lo abraza y le da un beso. And he begins to rehearse his speech. He begins to apologize and, and beg to come back as a servant. 
y comienza a pedirle perdón a su padre para regresar. And his father says, I'll have nothing of that. Y el padre le dije, no quiero nada de eso. He says, he calls to his servants, he says, bring him a robe, bring him a ring, bring him sandals, we're going to have a party. Y el padre le dice al siervo, tráele el anillo, tráele un vestido y tráele los zapatos porque vamos a tener una fiesta. And, you know, it's a very heartwarming story. Y es una uh, historia que nos toca el corazón. It makes you feel good. I know Sister Linda, she's been watching these, um, uh, what do they call those silly Christmas stories? Uh, the Hallmark. Hallmark the Hallmark. Um, I've been watching more Hallmark movies than I, I'm um, telling you. I've seen so many, I started repeating. You've seen repeats. La hermana Linda. Le gustan mucho estas historias de que enseñan mucho cariño. Y en el canal Hallmark enseñan muchas películas de Navidad donde todo hay gusto y armonía en la casa. It's like every time it starts to snow, you know they're going to kiss. Y, y, y sabemos que cada vez que comienza a nevar que se van a besar. It's so predictable. Every one, the same ending, you know. Todas las historias tienen el mismo... Uh, Conclusion. But in this case, this is a story of us in our, for our salvation. Pero esta historia es para nosotros de nuestra salvación. How we repent of our sins when we recognize what a mess we've made of our lives and we go back to our Father and ask Him to forgive us. Es cuando nosotros nos arrepentimos, cuando reconocemos todo lo que hemos dañado en nuestras vidas y regresamos a nuestro padre a pedirle perdón. And you know, for a long time I used to read this story when I might have been feeling a little bit down and I wanted to be lifted up a little bit to remember that my father loves me and he's willing to take me back if I sincerely repent. Y cuando en veces me siento mal, me gusta mucho leer esta historia porque yo sé que mi padre me va a, nunca me va a negar su cariño, siempre está para mí. But you know, I started reading this one time and I was looking at it here recently. I said, why a robe, a ring, and sandals? Y esta vez estaba leyendo la historia y dije, ¿por qué el anillo? ¿Por qué el vestido? ¿Y por qué las sandalias? You know, God doesn't put things in scripture by accident. Everything happens for a reason. Dios no puede cosas en la, en la Biblia no más para ponerlas. Siempre tiene una razón para hacerlo. So I did a little Bible study that I want to share with you. Así que hice un estudio bíblico y quiero compartirlo con ustedes. Everything that the Father gave His Son represents a restoration of the covenant that they had between each other. Cada cosa que el Padre le dio al Hijo era el... el reconocimiento del, coven, del pacto que tenía el padre con el hijo. Let's start with the robe. Vamos a comenzar con la ropa. If we turn over to the book of Job, the 29th chapter, 14th verse. Job 29. Job 29, 14. 29, Brother Mike's going to bring 14. it up on the screen. And, and be patient with Brother Mike. He doesn't know any of these scriptures yet. So he's going to hear them just like you for the very first time. El hermano Magno conoce estos escrituras, así que él los va a escuchar por primera, primera vez como ustedes. It says, I put on righteousness and it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. Sister Lily. Vestíame de justicia y ella me vestía como un manto y mi toca era juicio. In this verse is telling us that the righteousness is like a robe that we wear. Esta, esta palabra nos dice que el, el, el lo justo es con la justicia que usamos, es el mantel. That it's a representation to us. It's something physical that we can look at as we try to imagine ourselves in the presence of God. Y es algo representando para que puedan ver ¿Cómo puede ser que nos vamos a ver en los ojos del Señor? There have been many experiences in the church where people are seen receiving a robe 
of righteousness during a baptism or during their ordinations. Hemos tenido muchas visiones donde gente ha visto en las ordenancias y bautismos gente recibiendo este manto de, uh, de, que reciben. Let's turn over to Isaiah 61.10. Isaiah 61.10. It says here, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me in the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decked himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with jewels. This is a, another representation of how God clothes us in this righteousness. It's a metaphor for our closeness and our right relationship with Him. Esta es la forma que nos enseña que nos viste para y representa cómo es el cómo él cumple la justicia con nosotros. And when that boy took off, when he took his inheritance and he left his father, he took off that robe of righteousness as he began to use his money for bad purposes. Y cuando ese hijo se fue de su casa, dejó su manto de justicia y siguió en, las mal, en el mal camino. So how appropriate is it that the first thing his father does is put that robe right back on his shoulders to tell everybody my son and I are in a good place. Y que aprobó el Señor a su hijo en frente de todos que le puso su manto de justicia que él tenía su posición otra vez. Let's go on to the ring. Ahora vamos a ir al anillo. Let's jump over to Genesis, Brother Mike, Genesis 41, 42. Genesis 41, 42. And it says here, Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestigers of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. <laughs> and then Brother Michael, let's skip ahead to the book of Esther. Ahora vamos al libro de Esther. Chapter 8, verse 2. Capítulo 8, versículo 2. Yep, 2. It says, And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it to Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. In the Old Testament, the ring represents authority and power from the king. Whoever wears the ring makes and seals the rules and the laws of the country. El que tenía este anillo, él es el que sea las leyes, las, todos los que se hace en, esa, en ese país. The government, the, the officers of the government would write out the law, they would put it on a piece of paper, they would roll it up, they would melt some wax onto the seal, and the king would take his ring and push it into that wax so that when it, so, when it got cold, they would deliver that message and everyone would know this came from the king himself. Cuando los gobernadores y los que escribían las, las leyes lo escribían, ponían una parte de, uh, uh, de la, uh, ¿cómo se dice? Uh, la cera. Y el, el rey ponía su sello en esa cera para que sabieran que esto venía del, del rey. So now, for the, going back to our story, 
The father has given his son back his robe, and now he puts a ring on to let everyone know, this my son has the authority of me, my power. He, when he speaks, it's like I'm speaking. Give him that respect. Entonces, él, cuando el padre le puso el manto y el anillo a su hijo, era para demostrar a la gente que él tenía la misma autoridad y poder como su padre y que lo debían de respetar como lo respetaban a él. You can see how now the father has restored his son not only back to a good relationship, but given him up a place, a position in the family. Y ahora podemos ver como el padre restauró a su hijo, no lo más como hijo, pero posición de, de autoridad y poder. Now we're going to look at the sandals. Ahora vamos a ver de las sandalias. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 24, 17. Ezekiel 24, 17. Yep. It says, forbear to cry. Make no mourning for the dead. Bind the tire of, of thine head upon thee. Put on thy shoes upon thy feet. And cover not thy lips. And eat not the bread of men. In this... In the passage of scripture, Ezekiel has been told by God, I am going to take your wife. En esta uh, parte de Ezequiel, Dios le ha dicho a Ezequiel, te voy a quitar tu esposa. But you have a message to deliver, and so there can be no mourning. Pero tú tienes un mensaje que llevar, no puedes estar triste. When the Jews would mourn, they would take off their sandals and they would walk in bare feet and wear sackcloth and ashes. Cuando alguien se moría en la familia de una persona, el hombre se quitaba las sandalias y andaba en un saco y de, uh, y de uh, lo que sobra de lo, cuando se quema algo, ceniza. Gracias. But here God is telling him, put your sandals back on. The mourning is over. Y aquí Dios le está diciendo, el ponte los zapatos porque no vas a estar triste. So how much more important is it then back to our story that when the father gives his son sandals, he says the mourning is over. It's time for celebration. Y como más en esta historia, cuando el padre le dice que le pongan sus zapatos al hijo, ya no pueden estar tristes, vamos a estar celebrando, gozando su regreso. Kill the fatted calf, my son is home. Maten el, la vaquita para, vamos a comer porque mi hijo ha regresado. This is a wonderful representation now, all of this imagery coming together to show not only has the son returned, but under what conditions the father has fully received him back into his arms. Y esta demostración nos en enseña cómo el Señor recibió para atrás a su hijo y cómo le perdonó todo y lo repuso para atrás en su lugar. But because I said at the beginning, this is also all about covenants. Y todo esto, les dije en el principio, también es de los pactos. The same story, the same imagery applies to Joseph as we look towards the restoration of Israel. Y es el mismo cosa que le pasó a José para nosotros llegar a la restauración de Israel. That as the Gentiles begin to fall further and further into iniquity, the robe of righteousness will be placed upon Joseph. Entre más y más los gentiles tienen la iniquidad, más pronto le van a poner el manto a José. And as they take their rightful place, and the choicier steps forward, a ring will be placed upon their hand. Y cuando venga el, el que escogido, va a venir y cuando lo esco, escojan, le van a poner su anillo. And as Zion is built upon this land, the sandals will be placed on Joseph's feet again, and Zion will be established, and the promises of God will be fulfilled for all to see. Y cuando el, si, uh, José llegue a Sion, 
Me van a poner los sandales otra vez para la restauración y para la honra y gloria de nuestro Señor y todo el poder va a ser de él. And the part, the imagery of this story that I like the most is the father seeing his son afar off. Y lo más que me gusta de esta historia es cuando el padre ve al hijo desde lejos. He doesn't wait for his son to come all the way home. Él no espera que llegue su hijo hasta la casa. You know, I, I've told you many stories about my father and our relationship. It wasn't always the best. Yo les he contado muchas veces de la relación de mi padre y mío, y no todo el tiempo fue lo mejor. And, and in his best attempts at parenting, my father sometimes would make me go through things that were a little embarrassing. Y en, en el poder de mi padre de corregirme en veces me hacía hacer cosas que me daba vergüenza. I remember after my first quarter away from home, I went to, to college many miles away, I decided to, to grow a beard. Cuando me fui la primera a cuarta de la escuela en el colegio, decidí hacerme, crecerme una barba. And you know, in 90 days, it never looked anything like Brother Juan's beard. En 90 días no se parecía a mi barba como la de hermano Juan. But I had a nice looking beard and, and I was pretty proud of it. Pero tenía una, una más o menos bien y me gustaba. And I didn't tell them. They would call every week to see how I was doing. I never let on. I said, this is going to be a surprise. Y hablaba con ellos fre frecuentemente, pero nunca les dije lo que estaba haciendo porque les iba a dar una sorpresa. Yeah, my father didn't have much of a sense of humor when it came to surprises. Mi padre no era curiosidad cuando le daban sorpresas. So when I showed up with this beard on my face, he wasn't too happy. Cuando él vio que yo tenía esta barba, él no estaba muy contento. You know, it was like I had done something really terrible, right? Like pierced an ear or something, you know? <laughs> Para él fue algo tan tremendo como que si me fuera abujerado un oído. Of all the things I could have done, that was probably the most tame you know, and yet I was scolded by my father for growing a beard. De tantas cosas más malas que podía haber hecho, de esto me, uh, me regañó mucho mi padre. And he says, you know what, shave off that beard and apologize. Y me dijo, quítate esa barba y pídeme perdón, disculpas. Uh, that's what I did. Y es lo que hice. I shaved off my beard and I apologized. <laughs> to this day, I don't know what I was apologizing for. <laughs> but I, I did it to make him happy. The father in this story didn't wait and punish his son for what he had done. Pero en esta historia, el padre no esperó al hijo para castigarlo por lo que él había hecho. I could see a lot of fathers today when their son in this situation coming back to them saying, you wasted all that money, I want nothing to do with you. Yo puedo ver muchos padres en esta situación que digan, ah, gastaste todo ese dinero, yo no quiero nada que ver contigo. Nothing could have been further from this man's mind. Nada pues estuvo más alejado de la, de la mente de este padre. He wanted his son back. He didn't care what condition he was in. He welcomed him back with open arms and forgave him for everything. Y este padre no le importó qué había hecho, qué, qué cosas había hecho. Él nomás lo perdonó y lo recogió y lo abrazó porque lo amaba. And I can imagine right now, Joseph may be feeling that they've been cast off they don't even know who they are. And when they come to that understanding, there might be some bitterness. Y pensamos que cuando José venga a este tiempo, no van a reconocer lo que ha pasado y a lo mejor van a tener un poco de coraje. But any bitterness will be quickly wiped away as they feel that robe, they wear that ring, and they see that party of Zion. They will forget the past and look forward with great anticipation. Y cuando ellos vean ese manto puesto en, en el José y el anillo, se les va a olvidar todo lo pasado, toda la injusticia, y van a celebrar en cuando lleguen a Sion. What does all this mean for you? ¿Qué quiere esto decir para usted? You have a loving father. Tienes una, un padre que te ama. You have a father that looks upon you with love and is calling to you every moment of every day. 
Tienes un padre que te ama tanto que te llama cada momento, cada segundo de tu vida. And sometimes you listen and sometimes you don't. Y en veces escuchas y en veces no. And sometimes you want to go do things your own way and sometimes you want to follow God's way, but he's always there no matter what you do. Y en veces tú quieres hacer lo que tú quieres, pero otras veces quieres hacer lo que el Señor quiere, pero el Señor siempre está para ti. But no matter how bad your life gets, no matter how bad you think you've performed, he is willing to not only take you back, but put a robe of righteousness on you, show that you have authority in his house, and make you one of his sons and daughters. El, el, el padre, no importa qué mal usted ha hecho su vida, qué tantas cosas malas ha hecho, él está dispuesto a perdonarlo y, y cubrirlo con su manta de justicia para que señales que usted tiene esa autoridad. Y el amor de Dios. And how much more will you appreciate what's happening to Joseph when you feel it in your own life and you see it happening to them? You'll be able to stand up and say, the promises are true. God is coming back to, to claim his people and we see the signs coming. Y cuando veamos esto, cuando José vea estas cosas pasando, que más grande vamos a saber que Dios cumple sus promesas. Take hope, brothers and sisters. Esperanza. Tengan esperanza. I don't know many Spanish words, but that one I know. Take hope that God has a plan that you are a part of it, but you're a small part of it. God's got a much bigger plan that we are working towards. Y tengan esperanza que aunque nosotros somos pequeña parte de ese plan. El plan es muy grande que Dios va a tener para cada uno de nosotros. I want you to believe that every single one of you is here today for a reason. Yo quiero que cada uno de ustedes crean hoy que todos tienen un propósito de estar aquí hoy. Whether you're baptized or not, God is trying to speak to your heart and tell you, you have a part to play in this restoration of Israel. Seas bautizado o no bautizado, tú tienes una parte que tener en esta restauración. And so if you're willing to open up your heart, God is willing to use you in absolutely amazing ways. Si estás dispuesto a abrir tu corazón, el Señor te puede usar en muchas cosas maravillosas. Pray and ask God, what does he want you to do in his kingdom? Ora y pídele al Señor, ¿qué es lo que tú quieres él quiere que usted haga en su reino. And if you've been praying that already, ask him what more he wants you to do in his kingdom. Y si ya está orando eso, díganle qué más quiere que él, nosotros hagamos. And God will answer and show you amazing things. Y Dios te va a contestar y te va a enseñar maravillas cosas. May God bless you as my prayer. Que el Señor los bendiga es mi oración. Wow. Do you feel the spirit of God? Yeah. I did. I want to tell you, every word is true. Yo quiero que hayan sentido el Espíritu del Señor y quiero decirles que cada, todas estas palabras son verdad. I didn't want to go to church on Sundays. A mí no me gustaba ir a la iglesia los domingos. But I married a woman that's very strong-willed, and she did. Y estoy casado con una mujer que tiene una voluntad muy fuerte y a ella sí le gusta ir a la iglesia. And everything was okay until my son, who was about five or six years old, said, I don't want to go to church either. Y todo estaba muy bien hasta que mi hijo que tenía cinco años dijo, yo no quiero ir a la iglesia tampoco. And she gave me an ultimatum. Y me dio algo que tenía que hacer. She said, get dressed, we're going to church. Dijo, tienes que vestirte y ir a la iglesia. I said, I'm going golfing. No, yo voy a ir a jugar like golf. I do every Sunday. Como hago todos los domingos. Then she said it in a voice that was non-negotiable. Get dressed. Voz, Your son el, won't go because of you. En una voz que no tenía que decir más, que vale más que te vistas, porque tu hijo tampoco no quiere ir a la iglesia. That was reasonable. So I got dressed and I went to church. Eso fue razonable, me vestí y fui a la iglesia. And it was not this church, just no a, a good church. Nomás era una buena iglesia. But as time went on, I felt the work with the children. 
Y cuando pasó el tiempo, me, me gustó trabajar con los niños. So she taught Sunday school and I taught Sunday school. Y ella enseñaba escuela bíblica y yo enseñaba escuela bíblica. And it was fun. Y me gustó mucho. I had 13, 14, 15 year old kids. De, uh, niños de 13, 14, 15 años. And it was fun because they challenged me. Y era bueno porque me daban uh, ánimo. Made me study. Me hacían estudiar. Then something happened. Y después algo pasó. I could feel God's spirit calling me. Puedes sentir el Espíritu Santo llamándome. I began reading the Bible every night. Comencé a leer la Biblia todas las noches. Two o'clock in the morning, she would wake up and say, what are you doing? Ella despertaba a las dos de la mañana y me preguntaba, ¿qué estás haciendo? I said, do you know what's in here? ¿Y tú sabes lo que está aquí? I said, I can't put it down. No lo puedo, no lo puedo quitar. And we were invited to come to the Church of Jesus Christ. Y nos invitaron a venir a la Iglesia de Jesucristo. And so the very first day that we went, desde el primer día que fuimos, I wanted to run. Yo quería correr. Because I could hear the Lord calling me. Porque oí al Señor que me llamaba. I said, I, I just want to go to church on Sunday, Lord. I don't, I don't want to do anything else. Yo le decía, Señor, yo no más quiero ir a la iglesia los domingos. No quiero hacer otra cosa más. And he was telling me it was time to come home. Y él me decía, es tiempo que vengas a la casa. He was telling me that he had a robe for me and he had a ring to put on my finger. Y él tenía una manta y un anillo que quería poner en mi dedo. And I said, Lord, I, I don't deserve that. Yo dije, Señor, yo no, te, yo no puedo te, tener ese. I, I, I don't deserve anything good from you because I've done nothing good for you. No, I tengo nada que yo tenga bueno para, para que yo reciba esto. And like you, maybe, he's working with you. Y así como él está uh, trabajando en ti. I was really stubborn. Yo era muy cabeza duro. And as I listened to the sermons every week, I started to understand something. Y cuando escuchaba los mensajes cada semana, comencé a poner atención y escuché algo. He was calling me from the foundation of the world. Y él me estaba llamando desde la fundación de la, de la tierra. It's not by chance that you're here today. No es por chance que usted esté aquí este día. Let me explain. Déjenme explicar. In the late 1800s, Carol's grandfather came from England and found an apartment in West Elizabeth, Pennsylvania. En los últimos de los 18,000 años, el abuelo de Carol uh, vino a... Where? Elizabeth, Pennsylvania. Llegó al, al pueblo de Elizabeth, Pennsylvania. Little tiny city. Un, un pequeño uh, pueblito. But his apartment was above a place where they held church services. Pero el apartamento de él estaba sobre un, donde hacían servicios de la iglesia. It was the church of Jesus Christ. Era la iglesia de Jesucristo. He was baptized. Él fue bautizado. Became an apostle. Y fue hecho apóstol. President of the church. Presidente de la iglesia. Her background. Es la de donde viene ella. On my side, my grandfather came from Italy. 1919. He goes to this little still city to get a job, Glassport, Pennsylvania. He va a Glassport, Pennsylvania, a un trabajo. And he finds the Church of Jesus Christ. The very first meeting, he asks for his baptism. Y encontró la Iglesia de Jesucristo y a la primera junta que fue pidió su bautismo. We had these people in our background who were followers of Jesus Christ. Teníamos estas gentes en nuestra descendencia que eran uh, seguidores de Jesucristo. And I came to realize he was calling me. Y llegué a realizar que él me estaba llamando. To come home. Que me viniera para mi casa. He was calling me from el, all my sinful ways to come me, home. Me estaba llamando de todos mis cosas pecadoras que había hecho, me estaba diciendo, regresa a casa. Said, Lord, I'm not worthy. Señor, yo no tengo. None of us are worthy. Nada tenemos, somos, tenemos eso de, de but tener it, esos gustos. But his love for each of us is so great. 
Pero su amor es tan grande para nosotros. Just like the prodigal son. Así como el hijo pródigo. See, we're all prodigal sons and daughters. Porque ya ven, todos somos hijos y hijas pródigos. In the day of our baptism. Ellos ya piden su bautismo. When we came out of the water, we could feel that we were born again and all our sins were gone. Y cuando nos bautizamos, sentimos que todos nuestros pecados fueron quitados y que habíamos renacido. And he was about to give us a new robe and put a ring on our finger. Y que nos iba a dar una, un nuevo anillo y una nueva manta. When we received the Holy Spirit, we were changed inside to a person that we, I didn't even know. Y cuando nos recibimos el Espíritu Santo, comencé a cambiar una persona que yo no conocía. It's true. You are born again. Es verdad. Naces de nuevo. And he's got a work for you to do. Y él tiene un trabajo para que usted haga. And we got involved in the work of the church. Y nos involucramos en el trabajo de la iglesia. And he has blessed us beyond understanding. Y nos ha bendecido además de lo que podemos entender. Brothers and sisters, all the things that you read in the Bible in the Book of Mormon, I've seen. Hermanos y hermanas, todo lo que yo, ustedes han leído en la Biblia, en el libro de Mormón, yo lo he visto. We have seen the dead rise. Hemos visto los muertos resucitados. We have seen people that are sick and dying in the hospital, healed by his son, Jesus Christ. Hemos visto gente enferma a punto de morir y que el Señor los ha aliviado por su Espíritu Santo. And not just in America, but throughout the world we've seen these things. No lo más aquí en América, pero en todo el mundo. But the work in America is about to start. Pero el trabajo aquí en las Américas va a comenzar. Our brother was talking about the tribe of Joseph, the Native American Indians. El hermano estaba platicando de los uh, nativos, americ uh, nativos americanos. And the Church of Jesus Christ has been given a commission. Y la iglesia de Jesucristo has, le ha dado al Señor una comisión. To bring Joseph home. A traer a José a su casa. And we can see the condition in our country. Y podemos ver las condiciones en este país. You know, next week we may not have dollar bills anymore. Do you know that? La semana que entra puede ser que ya no tengan el uso de los dólares. ¿Sabían eso? They're trying to pass legislation that we go to that computer money. Quieren pasar what's, the, la, what's the word I'm looking for? Cashless society. Quieren que vayan la, quieren hacer legal que usemos la computadora para, para agarrar dinero y ya no vamos a tener dinero que podemos agarrar en mano. That's written in the scriptures. Y eso está escrito en las escrituras. We're in the last days. Estamos en los últimos días. And he's looking for more of you to come home. Y él está buscando más que se vengan a la casa. I can't do it justice like Christ can. Yo no le puedo hacer justicia como Cristo puede. But each of you are sitting there that have not made a covenant with Jesus Christ. Y cada uno que está sentado aquí que no ha hecho ese pacto con el Señor. I invite you to join the family of God. Les invito que se reúnan con la, la familia de Jesucristo. The joy that you'll feel is more than anything you've ever experienced. El gozo que va a sentir es más tanto que usted nunca ha experimentado. And the things that he'll give you to do based on your skills and your knowledge. Y las cosas que él le va a poner a usted hacer según lo que usted sabe, lo que usted reconoce. May help to bring your entire family to know Christ. Puede traer a toda su familia a conocer a Jesucristo. So the invitation has been laid today for you. Aquí le pongo esta invitación en frente de ustedes. Regardless of what you've done in your past. No importa que usted haya hecho en su pasado. Lord Jesus Christ died for those sins. Nuestro Señor Jesucristo murió por esos pecados. And he'll wash you clean like a brand new baby. Y él te lavará limpio como un bebé nuevo. They call it being born again. Se llama ser nacido de nuevo. He'll make something out of you you can't imagine. Y él puede hacer algo tan lindo de usted que no se puede imaginar. So if you felt the spirit this morning of calling, si come usted, and see us this morning. Si usted sintió el espíritu con, que se ha estado moviendo este día, hable con nosotros después de la junta. The love you feel here today is nothing compared to the love that fills your heart when you're baptized. El amor que usted siente aquí no es el mismo 
el amor que usted siente cuando es, usted es bautizado. God bless you. Que el Señor los bendiga.